Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over 6 worked examples to show you how to do problems involving inductors and DC circuits. Now if you haven't already done so, check out the theory videos on inductors and DC circuits, back EMF and Lenz's law, self-inductance and energy stored by an inductor, as these will help you tackle the questions that we're about to do. So let's get started. Question 1 says a simple DC circuit containing an iron cord inductor, resistor, battery, switch and ammeter is set up. Part A says what is an inductor? Well an inductor is simply a coil of wire. It is often wrapped around an iron core. And if it is wrapped around an iron core, we call it an iron cord inductor, but if it's not then we just simply call it an air cord inductor. Part B then says to draw the circuit symbol for an iron cord inductor. Well the circuit symbol looks something like this, where you've got these sort of squiggles which represent the coils of wire, and then the straight line which represents the iron core that the coils of wire are often wrapped around. Part C says to sketch how the current in the circuit varies with time when the switch is closed, i.e. completing the circuit. Well this is a simple DC circuit containing an inductor and a resistor, so as soon as the switch is closed, the current in the inductor will start to increase. So we'll see this growth of current from 0 amps up to this maximum current value, which is defined by Vs over R, i.e. the maximum current I max is equal to Vs over R. And part 2 wants us to sketch how the current in the circuit varies with time when the switch is opened, i.e. breaking the circuit. Well when the switch is opened, the opposite thing happens, we get this decay of current from a maximum value down to 0 amps. And again our maximum current value is set by Vs divided by R, the supply voltage divided by the resistance. Question 2 says that an inductor, resistor and a DC supply are connected in series as shown below. So we've got a switch over on the left, an inductor with inductance L, a resistor of a resistance R and a 10 volt DC supply. Part A says the inductor has a large number of turns. The switch is now closed. Sketch a graph to show how the graph in the circuit varies with time. Well this is the same as what we did in question 1, where we've got the growth of current as soon as the switch is closed. So the current through the inductor will start off at 0 amps and then increase exponentially up to a maximum value set by Vs divided by R. Part B then says to explain using Lenz's law why the current does not reach its maximum value immediately. Well first of all, since the current is changing, we can say that the inductor generates a magnetic field around the coil which induces a back EMF. Lenz's law states that the induced EMF always opposes the change in current which causes it. Therefore, the inductor opposes the increase in current, meaning it will take time to reach its maximum value. Part C then says the resistance of the resistor is now reduced. The switch is opened and then closed again. Sketch a graph to show how the current varies with time after the switch is closed and note any differences to the graph in answer A. Well the first thing we need to realise is that a smaller resistance will mean a greater maximum current than in part A. And because of the smaller resistance, the growth of current will happen in a shorter time. So sketching our graph, it should look something like this, with current on the y-axis against time on the x-axis, and then we've got this maximum current set by Vs divided by R, and this lower curve down here, that is our answer to part A, and this new curve here shows we've got a greater maximum current going above Vs over R, and it's also reaching that maximum current in a shorter time than this curve in part A does. So we can label that as the answer to part C. Question 3 says to calculate the back EMF in an inductor of inductance 2 Henry's if current changes at a rate of 4 amperes per second. Well writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find epsilon, we know that L is 2 Henry's, we know that di by dt, the rate of change of current, is 4 amps per second, and writing down our equation for back EMF, we have epsilon equals minus L times di by dt, substituting in the numbers gives us minus 2 times 4, which gives an answer of minus 8 volts. Question 4 says that a 400 millihenry inductor has a current of 0.2 amps flowing through it. Calculate the energy stored in the inductor. Well writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find energy E. We know that the inductance cell is 400 millihenry, which is the same as writing 400 times 10 to the minus 3 henrys, and the current I is 0.2 amps. So writing down our equation for the energy stored by an inductor, we have E equals a half Li squared. Substituting in the numbers, we get a half times 400 times 10 to the minus 3 times 0.2 squared. Don't forget to square that term when you put it into your calculator, and you should get an answer of 8 times 10 to the minus 3 joules. Question 5 says that a 12 volt DC supply is connected in series with a 100 ohm resistor and a coil with an inductance of 0.5 henrys, a negligible internal resistance. So there's our 12 volt supply, our switch, 100 ohm resistor and 0.5 henry inductor. Part A says the switch is closed. Calculate the final current in the circuit. Well here we're trying to find the maximum current I max. We know that this is found using the supply voltage Vs, which is 12 volts in this case, and the resistance of the resistor R, which is 100 ohms. So writing down our equation for Ohm's law, V equals IR, we have Vs equals I max times R. Rearranging for I max, we have Vs divided by R. 
Substituting in the numbers, we get 12 over 100, which gives a final answer of 0.12 amps. Part B then says when the switch is opened, the current decreases to zero in 10 milliseconds. Calculate the average back EMF generated across the coil. Where we're trying to find back EMF epsilon here, we know that the inductance L is 0.5 henrys. We know that the change in current to DI is equal to 0.12 amps, which is our maximum current from part A. So it's going to increase from zero up to 0.12 amps. So that's the same as saying our change in current to DI. We've also got our change in time in the question here, which we can write as DT equals 10 milliseconds. And we can rewrite 10 milliseconds as 10 times 10 to the minus D seconds. And then writing down our equation for back EMF, we have epsilon equals minus L times DI by DT. Substituting in the numbers, we have minus 0.5 times 0.12 divided by 10 times 10 to the minus 3. Putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of minus 6 volts. And remember the negative sign is okay there. That just means we've got a back EMF which is opposing the direction of the current in our circuit. Lastly, part C says to calculate the energy stored in the coil before the switch was opened. Well, we'll have a maximum energy stored in the inductor when it's got maximum current flowing through it. So we're trying to find the energy stored E. We know the inductance L is 0.5 Henry. We know the maximum current I is 0.12 amps. And writing down our equation, we have E equals a half Li squared. We can then substitute in the numbers to get a half times 0.5 times 0.12 squared. Putting that into your calculator should give you a final answer of 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3 joules. Lastly, question 6 says that the circuit diagram shows an inductor connected to a 12 volt DC supply of negligible internal resistance. The resistance of the inductor coil is 1.0 ohms and the switch is now closed. So the inductor coil has its own resistance of 1 ohms and we've got this supply voltage of 12 volts and a switch. Part A says when this current in the circuit is 8.0 amps, the rate of the increase of the current is 400 amperes per second. Calculate the induced EMF across the coil. Well, to do this, we first need to calculate the voltage across the resistor VR and then find the voltage across the coil, which we could call V coil or the back EMF. And then find the voltage across the coil, which we could call V coil or another word for that is the self-induced EMF or the back EMF. So writing down, we know from the question, we're trying to find VR. We know that the current I is 8 amps and we know the resistance R is 1 ohm. So writing down the equation for Ohm's law, we have VR equals IR. Substituting in the numbers gives us 8 times 1, which simply gives us 8 volts across the resistor. We can then try and find the voltage across the coil or the self-induced or back EMF. And we can find this by saying the voltage across the coil is equal to the supply voltage minus the voltage across the resistor. And that's because we've got a series circuit here or a potential divider circuit. So the voltage from the supply will be shared across the components. So substituting in our values here, we get 12 minus 8, which gives an answer of 4 volts across the coil. Part B says to calculate the inductance of the coil. So we're trying to find L in this case. We know that epsilon is 4 volts from part A. That was the voltage across the coil, which is the same as the back EMF. We know that di by dt is 400 amperes per second from the question. And writing down our equation, we get epsilon equals minus L di by dt. Substituting in the numbers gives us 4 equals minus L times 400. And rearranging for L gives an answer of minus 0.01 henrys, but we can pretty much just ignore the minus in this case. The magnitude is the important part here. Part C says to calculate the rate of increase of current immediately after the switch is closed. So we're trying to find di by dt immediately after the switch is closed. We know that epsilon is 12 volts just at that point and the inductance cell is 0.01 henrys. So writing down our equation, we have epsilon equals minus L di by dt. Substituting in the numbers gives us 12 equals minus 0.01 times di by dt, and rearranging for di by dt gives us minus 1200 amps per second. Again, the magnitude is what's important here, so that's why I've put the minus sign in brackets. Part D says that a final steady value of current is produced in the coil. Find the value of this current. Well, it's gonna be a maximum current, so we're trying to find I max here. We know the supply voltage Vs is 12 volts and the resistance of resistor R is 1 ohm. So using Ohm's law, we have Vs equals I max R. Rearranging for I max, we have I max equals Vs over R. Substituting in the numbers, we get 12 divided by 1, which gives a maximum current of 12 amps. And lastly, part E says to calculate the final energy stored in the inductor. So we're trying to find the energy E. We know that inductance cell is 0.01 henrys. So the maximum current I is 12 amps. So writing down our equation, we have E equals a half Li squared. Substituting in the numbers, we have a half times 0.01 times 12 squared. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get a final answer of 0.72 joules. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.